I'll die in Mecca, they'll probably bury me in Medina. Assalamualaikum, hello, my name is Mohamed Al Saeed, but you may know me as Lars or Felix. I'm 20 years old, I study computer science with a focus on cloud computing. I am a very proud Muslim and that is what pushed me to set out on this goal to create the most beneficial content I can make in the areas of personal development and business with the root and focus being Islam. This is the story of my recent trip to Mecca and Medina and the unbelievable sequence of events that took place. So let's start with the idea. When the opportunity arises for you to go visit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's house it's really hard to say no regardless of what you have on your plate so in late 2022 when a couple of my friends told me that they wanted to go and asked if I would join them I quickly said yes but I was also quick to tell them that now would not be a suitable time for me as I had exams coming up and I couldn't be able to do anything until my exams were over but it was finalized then and there that once my exams were over we'd go into the details of this trip and inshallah go on the trip itself January 14 that's when I was supposed to be done with exams February 12th is when I was supposed to go back to uni for the second semester. That gave me 29 days to go on this trip. January 14th came, I finished my exams and I felt like I did good, alhamdulillah, but I needed a couple of days to rest my mind. It was Wednesday, the 18th of January, when we had a football match together and that was when we realized that the two friends that I was supposed to go on the trip with had university coming up on the following Sunday. And that took the counter from 29 days to 4 days. I'm going to spare you the details and tell you that basically Basically, we met in a coffee shop, finalized all the details, made all the bookings, paid all the money, and it was set. Thursday, the 19th of January, we'd go on the trip. Now, if you don't know where I live, I live on this very tiny archipelago slash island called the Kingdom of Bahrain, and we are neighbors with Saudi or otherwise known as Saudi Arabia. Now, if we had gone directly from our country to Jeddah, it would have costed us about three and a half times more than if we went from within Saudi. And since we're neighbors with them, we decided to drive to the closest city which was Dammam and from there take a domestic flight to Jeddah and from Jeddah we take the train directly to Mecca. Now again if you haven't been to Mecca then you probably don't know that the flight crew informs you when you're about to pass the Miqat so you can enter the state of Ahram. So we decided to change clothes in the Dammam airport to just avoid having to get up and change in the plane itself. Fast forward and now it's about 9 p.m. we've arrived at the hotel we've dropped our bags and now we're ready to go on Amrah. We open the TV to the Mecca channel and we see the that it's quite crowded so we decide to wait it out till things calm down a bit so we can go down. At about midnight we realized that things weren't going to change anymore so we went down and decided to start performing Umrah. Now this actually wasn't my first time. My first time was actually less than a year before this and it was on the 29th of Ramadan. I know, amazing, alhamdulillah. I will never forget the feeling of first seeing the Kaaba and how I literally felt my soul wanting to get out of my body and run towards it. Now this day was absolutely absolutely no difference. We performed tawaf, we played the rakatain, we did the sa'i and 20,000 steps and two hours and a half later we were done with the umrah. Now see this is where the tempo of the story changes. We got back to the hotel, we still haven't had any food, things are amazing for us spiritually but horrible for us physically. Alhamdulillah regardless. We had planned to go to Medina the next day but we didn't get to the transportation part which is stupid on our end but now we were stuck with no way to travel four hours to Medina. I rushed to the website faster than I've ever rushed before trying to get seats. Now mind you, it's about 3.34 a.m. for us and we're trying to book a Friday train to Medina on Friday. I swear, there were only two trains from about 15 to 20 trains with available seats on them. The earliest train, which was at 8 a.m. and the latest train that was at 10 p.m. Friday, I wanted to go see the Prophet. Once I told them that we'd be able to go see the Prophet وسلم, on a Friday if we made this decision, they saw that there was no debate to be had. The website was going crazy, we were having a super hard time making the payment but alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, we had it done and now in about three and a half to four hours we'd be on a train supposedly to Medina. We had no time to rest, the air time had now come upon us and we would have to come back, get ready and be gone. Well, we kind of took too long to get ready and it was now 7.20 when we were going down to get a taxi to go to the train station. As the seconds passed, the stress rose and became less and less likely that we would make it to the train station. Now they were very punctual. That was the problem. After about five taxis rejecting us, we had one who agreed to take us. It was about 7.45 a.m. We looked at the guy and told him, do you think you can make it on time? He was a simple Bengali man and he looked at us and said, inshallah. <laughs> ah, God bless him. I kid you not, Lewis Hamilton 
Jordan had nothing on this guy. This was Mohammed Diesel. I believe we were riding a Yaros, but it didn't matter because this dude's bumper swallowed some of the most annoying speed bumps I've ever seen in my life, but he did not care. I had the money ready, and as soon as we arrived, I gave him, and we started sprinting like there was literally no tomorrow. Now, I was wearing a thobe, and you can't run in a thobe. Everybody knows that, but I raised that thing up to my waist and started running, sprinting, Usain Bolt style with the hands and stuff, everything, everything. We got to the tickets. The lady wanted to let us in because she saw how much we were struggling. The guy was like, oh, it's kind of too late. The lady was like, just go, just go. We started running. Some employees were cheering for us, pointing us in the direction that we had to run in. Others were like, how are you guys still here? Doesn't didn't matter to us really. We were just running and running and running and running. We saw the door that we needed to get through. One of us is really skinny and really fast. He made it in, but you gave the other two hope that we'd make it. Just thinking about missing the train after being so close is what drove me insane. So I drove it into full gear. I ran and ran. And when I got to the door, I kind of jumped in, even though that was unnecessary because there was no jump to be made. I got in and I started walking, trying to find my seat. I was panting like a freaking bulldog. There were some light claps and cheers and people were like smiling like really, really hard. It was amazing. I was really happy. We were still stupid and idiots for being that late. But the most important thing was, alhamdulillah, we had made it. When I took a seat, this insane chest pain set in. I swear to God, wallah al -Azim, I felt like I was going to die on the spot. I'll die in Mecca. They'll probably bury me in Medina. That's noble. That's what I thought. I sealed my eyes shut to try to ease the pain. And from that moment, it was lights out for me. About an hour and a half later, I opened my eyes. And to my surprise, I wasn't dead. I saw my friends and I got up to speak to them. Then we finally made it to Medina. After washing up and getting coffee, we took a taxi from the train station in Medina to Al Masjid al Nabawi. It was 11 a.m. and the Friday prayer would commence at about 12.30 p.m. So we just took a front row seat and waited. The khutbah began and it ended. Then we prayed. And now my sole purpose for that day was to go visit the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You won't believe how smooth things go over there, alhamdulillah. 20 minutes later, it's now soon going to be my turn to go in there with the other hundreds of people waiting. Slowly, you walk back into the mosque, but from the side where you can see the tomb of Rasul Sallallahu next to him, Abu Bakr radiallahu and next to him, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. But the thing is, as you get closer, a small barrier splits the group into two. Now, I didn't know that. And amidst all the chaos, I got pushed to the right side, which is the further side from Rasul Sallallahu But regardless, I wasn't going to waste this moment thinking, oh, I wish I was on the left. And I started greeting the Prophet Sallallahu and saying all the things I wanted to say. I also kind of spoke to Abu Bakr and Umar, but I don't know if they can hear me. But I was sure for a fact that Rasul Sallallahu did and could hear me. Regardless, I finished, I exited, and I had this feeling that I just wanted to be closer. I wanted to go back in and be closer. And so my mind was made up. I turned around and went back into the line to wait for my turn once again. When I came and turned around, an officer asked me if I was with the group because sometimes people travel in groups, they're with like agencies and stuff. I told him, no, I'm, I'm on my own. So he told me, come stand in this line. I said, okay, this is different, but fine, whatever. I stood in the line. Slowly, we started getting closer to the entrance to the tomb of Rasul Sallallahu except we started veering to the right as we got closer to the entrance. Now, I didn't understand what was happening. So I tried to peek to the front of the line and I realized that they were checking for something. Now we got a bit closer and I realized that they're checking for reservations. Reservations for what? Reservations to pray in the Rawdha, a Rawdha Sharif. Now, if you don't know what a Rawdha is, it translates directly to a garden. But here it's referring to the piece of land between the member of Rasul and his tomb. In a hadith from Sahih Bukhari, Abu Huraira radiallahu anh, says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ma bayna bayti wa minbari rawdhatun min riyadh al-jannah. This translates directly to Between my house and my pulpit There is a garden of the gardens of paradise And my pulpit is on my fountain tank Also known as Al Kawthar Now of course if we had more time And we could properly plan for this trip We would have planned for this moment as well But we barely had transportation So we obviously didn't think as far as this I got closer and closer to the front of the line In front of me was a group of men Who tried to show the officer a visa Hoping he would either let them pass Or he wouldn't notice But he noticed and he took them and escorted them outside. Now there was an organizer standing at the front of our line only. I didn't want to be embarrassed by the officer honestly and I actually don't like trying to be in places where I don't rightfully belong so I just spoke to him and told him hey I'm here by mistake I'm in this line by mistake I want to get to the Prophet ﷺ. how can I make it there. He took me by my hand and we walked 10 steps forward. In a low voice he said I smiled very widely and told him <laughs> he said hey 
Chaitim. So I did. I just kept walking forward and forward and forward, and I sat where they told me to sit. Time kept going on, and the waiting area just kept filling up. But about an hour or so later, a very kind officer named Khalaf stood up on a chair and told us that we'd soon be entering the Rawa. He told us that the reason we've been making you wait so long is that we want to give you the chance to pray Asr in the Rawa. He asked us to stay patient, and he said, be calm and respectful because there are elders here. And lastly, he said, don't forget us from your dua. When he said this, I looked at his badge because I wanted to make dua for him by name. Usually the Haram police are kind of, you know, like uh, harsh because they have to deal with a lot of pain in the butt, honestly. But this guy was different. The time came and people, of course, as expected, started running. But I decided to walk calmly with a bit of pace, but calmly to make my way into the road. I made it into the third row. You didn't need to push anyone, didn't need to be rude or anything. And now I was in this beautiful place that I was overwhelmed and embracing. It was just beyond amazing. Some of the most pious people that weren't prophets, obviously, were standing in this spot right here. And the Prophet himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, walked on the very ground I'm walking on right now. Prayed on the very ground I'm praying on right now. After we prayed Asr and everything was over, I was getting ready to make my way to the exit. There I saw Khalaf. I shook his hand and told him, your name is Khalaf, right? He said, yeah, why? I told him, because you asked us to make dua, so I wanted to make dua for you by name. He was very happy and delighted by this. He asked me a couple questions like where you're from blah 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 all of that stuff because the accents in the GCC are very similar for the most part he was so delighted with me that he asked me if I had seen the prophet's member and before I could even give him an answer he was dragging me by the hand and taking me to it he said look at it enjoy it and even take a picture with it now the picture was the last thing I cared about right now honestly even during Umrah and the rest of this entire trip my phone and pictures and memories all of that stuff was not of importance it was the experience itself I started to embrace every single detail in that member I did step a picture for my parents honestly, so here it is. But you can imagine how content and satisfied and blessed I felt at that very moment, alhamdulillah. I made my way to the exit. I shook hands with Khalaf once again. And to exit, you have to go left. So I walked out. I went left. And now I wasn't out of the mosque. I was out of the rawdha. But guess where I was now? In front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which was what I intended to do originally. And yeah, I was on the left side now. I was on the close side. I could touch it if I wanted to. I don't want to though, because some people do that wiping, which is just haram. It's wrong. Don't do it. No good comes from you doing that. We don't worship the people. Yes, we love them, we miss them, but that's not how it works. Now I re-greeted Rasul and I told him, do you see what's happening to me? I was humbly asking him and, and hoping he was proud of how blessed I was being. Because obviously this is a sign of Allah's satisfaction with me, which is the most important entity to the both of us, me and Rasul I continued to speak to him and things were calmer and slower now because people weren't allowed to visit him during prayer times and we had just finished prayer. I once again greeted Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar as I left the mosque, my chest feeling light as feathers and my heart was just filled with light. I really felt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was happy with me and I was sure of it. I went back to my friends who were buying dates. I roughly explained everything that had happened because I was gone for a long time. Fast forward to the next day, we made our way back to our country. I was satisfied. I was super happy. Alhamdulillah. I am no perfect servant, but I was 100% sure that I was moving in the right direction, growing in the right direction. And honestly, that's all that mattered to me. I also may go back there this Ramadan, inshallah. So hopefully I'll see you there. <laughs> if you're going to take one thing from this video, let it be to prioritize your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I swear, that's all we need for success here and hereafter. <laughs> فمن حج البيت واعتمر فلا جناح عليه أن يطوف بهما ومن تطوع خيرا فإن الله شاكر عليم